Lucille Ball Husband, Family, Lifestyle, Net Worth, Biography, Career Lucille Ball was an American actress, comedian, producer, and studio executive. She was recognized by Time in 2020 as one of the most influential women of the 20th century for her work in all four of these areas. Born, August 6, 1911, Jamestown, New York. Died, April 26, 1989, age 77 years, Cedars Sinai Medical Center, Los Angeles, California. Place of burial, Lakeview Cemetery. Children, Lucy Arnez, Desi Arnez. Grandchildren, Catherine Luckinbill, Haley Arnez, Joseph Luckinbill, Simon Luckinbill, Julia Arnez. Spouse, Gary Morton, M. 1961-1989, Desi Arnez, M. 1940-1960. Lucille Ball net worth $60 million. Early life. Lucille Desiree Ball was born on Sunday, August 6, 1911, at 69 Stewart Avenue in Jamestown, New York, the first child and only daughter of Henry Durrell Head Ball, a lineman for Bell Telephone, and Desiree Evelyn Didi, Nahunt, Ball. Her family belonged to the Baptist Church. Her ancestors were mostly English, but a few were Scottish, French, and Irish. Some were among the earliest settlers in the 13 colonies, including Elder John Crandall of Westerly, Rhode Island, and Edmund Rice, an early emigrant from England to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Her father's Bell Telephone career frequently required the family to move during Lucy's early childhood. The first was to Anaconda, Montana, and later to Trenton, New Jersey. On February 28, 1915, while living in Wyandotte, Michigan, Lucy's father died of typhoid fever at age 27 when Lucy was only three. At that time, Dee Dee was pregnant with her second child, Fred Ball, 1915-2007. Lucille recalled little from the day her father died, except a bird getting trapped in the house, which caused her lifelong ornithophobia. Ball's mother returned to New York, where maternal grandparents helped raise Lucy and her brother Fred in Celeron, a summer resort village on Chautauqua Lake. Their home was at 59 West 8th Street, later renamed to 59 Lucy Lane. Also living in the house were Ball's aunt and uncle, Lola and George Mandicos, and their daughter, Lucy's first cousin, Cleo. Having grown up with Lucy, Cleo would later work as a producer on several of Lucy's radio and television programs, and Lucy also introduced Cleo to her second husband, the Los Angeles Times critic Cecil Smith. Ball loved Celeron Park, a popular amusement area at the time. Its boardwalk had a ramp to the lake that served as a children's slide, the pier ballroom, a roller coaster, a bandstand, and a stage where vaudeville concerts and plays were presented. For years after Henry Ball's death, Dee Dee married Edward Peterson. While they looked for work in another city, Peterson's parents cared for Lucy and Fred. Ball's step-grandparents were a puritanical Swedish couple who banished all mirrors from the house except one over the bathroom sink. When Lucy was caught admiring herself in it, she was severely chastised for being vain. She later said that this period of time affected her deeply, and it lasted seven or eight years. When Lucy was 12, her stepfather encouraged her to audition for his Shriners organization that needed entertainers for the chorus line of its next show. While Ball was on stage, she realized performing was a great way to gain praise. In 1927, her family was forced to move to a small apartment in Jamestown after their house and furnishings were sold to settle a legal judgment. Career Early Career in 1925, Ball, then only 14, started dating Johnny DeVita, a 21-year-old local hoodlum. Her mother was unhappy with the relationship and hoped the romance, which she was unable to influence, would burn out. After about a year, her mother tried to separate them by exploiting Ball's desire to be in show business. Despite the family's meager finances, in 1926, she enrolled Ball in the John Murray Anderson School for the Dramatic Arts, in New York City, where Betty Davis was a fellow student. Ball later said about that time in her life, all I learned in drama school was how to be frightened. Ball's instructors felt she would not be successful in the entertainment business, and were unafraid to directly state this to her. In the face of this harsh criticism, Ball was determined to prove her teachers wrong and returned to New York City in 1928. That same year, she began working for Hattie Carnegie as an in-house model. 
Carnegie ordered Ball to bleach her brown hair blonde, and she complied. Of this time in her life, Ball said, Hattie taught me how to slouch properly in a $1,000 hand-sewn sequin dress and how to wear a $40,000 sable coat as casually as rabbit. Her acting forays were stilled at an early stage when she became ill with rheumatic fever and was unable to work for two years.